Hello. Welcome to Christy's Couch. My name is Christy Lukasiak, and you are hanging out with me on my couch. Happy Thursday. Okay. Well, I hope that your week has been amazing and fantastic, and I hope that you are enjoying incredible weather. I always bitch that Pittsburgh has the worst weather, and it has been absolutely gorgeous and stunning and beautiful in all of the words this week. So, I have been loving life. Um, it's like in, I think it's going to be in the 70s today and fairly sunny. So I'm trying to get all of my work and chores done. So I'm allowed to go on my afternoon walk because that would be really nice. Um, I joke, but still, you know, like I feel like I have so many different irons in the fire and I run so many different businesses and have so many different projects that I'm always working on that sometimes it's like, it's a constant juggling act. And then I'll watch Mark leave to go take the dogs on a walk. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could go. But that's my own thing. Like, I am a freaking workaholic. Is anyone else like this? Is it just me? Like, people will ask me all the time, what do you do for fun? What's your hobby? And I honestly love what I do. And so I am constantly... I don't know. That's what I spend my time doing. So, I mean, I don't want to like sit here and give you a rundown bullet pointed list, but I often, and this, this is actually a question that drives me crazy on social media. People will chime in and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, just because I don't get up and go to an office every day, I absolutely run a bunch of different revenue streams or businesses or however you want to call it. Like, Obviously, because of Dance Moms, I have a large social media following and I work as an influencer. You know, I work with brands that I love and I've been fortunate enough that I've had that opportunity to grow my social media. But I've also worked very hard at at growing that. I didn't just take like Dance Moms and sit on it. Um, I actively work to kind of, you know, evolve along with whatever's happening there instead of just posting like poor quality pictures and being like, well, I have a lot of followers because you watch me on TV. Like I've tried to kind of keep up with things and evolve and be strategic and learn all the different platforms. So, you know, like you have that part of my life. Um, And P.S., that in and of itself is a whole thing because like you have Instagram, you have YouTube, you have TikTok, you have um, Facebook and Twitter. Like I'm not totally active on everything just because no human can possibly do all of that. But I'm active enough on a lot of them that I definitely have like content that I'm constantly, you know, shooting or curating or posting or sharing. So like that's a huge time suck. And and honestly, I'm not complaining because it's it's my business. Like that's what I do. That's how I contribute income to my house for my family to live. Um, And then of course, you know, like... YouTube is obviously its own thing with shooting and then I have an editor. I do. I don't do. I used to do all of Chloe's editing and stuff, but it's just way too much. Um, And I clearly have my podcast, which I love because it's just me like chatting and talking to you guys and we all know I like to talk. So that's not not terrible, but it's still something that I have to put on my schedule um, and definitely do. And trust me, I have times that I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. Um, Just because some days it's nice to have a day off. Um, And then, of course, I have my adulting program, which is a monthly membership um, where I have young people from all over the world who um, are inside of this program. And they have access to a community, but also every month I teach a master class and then I do some uh, live Zooms with them and I'm helping them to effectively become adults. You know, I'm helping them transition from full time students into full time adults. So I'm writing that curriculum, I'm recording it, I'm like coordinating all the graphic design, and I have a team that works with me on that. And so, you know, I'm doing all of that plus the marketing. And then I talk to my sororities in the evening, which there's days that sometimes I talk to five and six of them and they're each an hour long. So, you know, five o'clock rolls around and most people are, you know, ending, ending their day. And I'm just getting started because I'm addressing these young women all over the country, which again, I love doing because I feel like I'm making a positive impact on the world, but it's kind of like, 
I don't know. I, I just constantly switch and, you know, I'm always doing something else and I have other other gears that I have to go into. And then I do a weekly Amazon Live where I share my favorite finds and things that I think not just like help me, but also it could be great like adulting finds, like first apartment must-haves, what have you. Um God, I'm probably forgetting something. And again, I didn't want to like give you this big list, but it is aggravating to me when people are like, what do you do? And I'm like, what don't I do? I'm I'm a busy girl. Um, Plus I have Clara that I'm raising and I'm still, you know, a mom and a wife. And I don't know, I'm just looking forward to some downtime here soon. So, you know, the school year is wrapping up, which means that my sororities are kind of, they're ebbing, like they're ebbing, I don't know. They're starting to ebb, I guess. Is that ebb? Ebb is... I'm doing less of them come April. And then May, obviously, like everybody's graduating and getting ready to like go into the summer. So it's going to give me some breaks and free time, which I will love because I love nothing more than sitting like on my back deck in the evening and just kind of like listening to the birds and watching the sunset and kind of just being zen. So I'm very much looking forward to that. My God, I feel like I just went on this tangent telling you like, let me tell you everything I do. Um, But, you know, look, I feel like I get a lot of shit online sometimes and I just, I feel like I need to validate who I am. So that's all the things I do. But, you know, speaking of online love or hate, um, if you like this podcast, I would ask you so kindly to take two seconds out of your day and rate it, you just hit five stars. Like if you like it, just hit five stars. You don't have to write a review. You don't have to like subscribe. Or actually, I'm going to tell you subscribe because subscribing to the podcast definitely helps. Um, But rate it, subscribe to it. If you have a few extra minutes, absolutely. I would love to read your reviews. Um, But I mean, just that subscribing and that rating helps me tremendously. Like, I can't tell you how much that helps me. It seems like such a silly little thing, but it really is super important. So if you will take like 10 seconds out of your day, I would appreciate it more than I can tell you. So thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Actually, let me... Ah. So here is some of... I, I'm just going to take a minute to read a couple of reviews. Um because I do appreciate it. So gymnast1052 says, I love hearing all things dance moms and your advice is spot on. I love the listener questions at the end. Awesome podcast. Way to go. Oh, that's so fun. Um, then Callie A says, I love this podcast. I can't wait each week to listen to the new episode. Christy is my favorite. It's so amazing that I would so be a co-host. Aw, that's really, really sweet. Um, Oh, this is such a good one. Ash278906 says, love, love, love this podcast. And it's so amazing. Really changing my mind about some of the people on the show. It's great. And every episode is awesome. Ah, see, these are so sweet. So look, if you write a podcast, then, or I'm sorry, if you write a review, um, maybe you'll get to have it read on the air. Huh. Ah, this is sweet. Okay. So I love that. Thank you guys so much for taking that time. I really, really appreciate it. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. No matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. There are classes in topics like illustration, graphic design, photography, marketing, even even film and music. So I took a photography and an editing class over those lockdown days. And I can tell you that I looked forward to doing something that was fun. And I definitely feel like I learned so much and improved in an area 
that was just fun for me. So with Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to express your creativity. And Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash couch and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash couch to get a free trial of premium membership. You are going to love it just like me. Okay. So what's out? Ha- what else is happening in my life? Um, okay. So, uh, um, last year. So one of the things I get asked all the time is how I got like fit or in shape or whatever, because I mean, it's obvious that I have lost weight over the last couple of years and not that I'm saying like you need to lose weight, but I will tell you, I personally tend to be a little bit, I I tend to run like naturally a little bit thinner, like that's just my build. But obviously over the years, like sitting and eating and drinking and just running my mouth has obviously put weight on. Um, But once I sort sort of just eat a little bit better and get a little bit of exercise, I tend to naturally lose weight very easily, which I know I'm so lucky and I'm not like bragging or saying, you know, look at me, look at me, but that's just the way I am. Like that's my metabolism on my body. So last year it was kind of weird. Like at the beginning of quarantine, it just happened to line up. That's what I mean. It was weird. Um, I had gone and met with a nutritionist in LA and his name is Dr. Gulia, G-O-G-L-I-A. And he is one of those nutritionists that um, like works with the stars will say, but seriously, like if there's somebody getting ready for a major role, like one of the Hemsworth brothers, so to speak, where they have to like get in shape. Um, I also know he worked with a lot of the Kardashians. Um, but basically you go and you take a blood test and they tell you like what type of metabolism you have. And then they, they kind of, um, tailor your eating plan based on your metabolism. Now, obviously not everyone in the world has access to this, but they also have for people who just want to, um, who just want to try things. Um, they have like an app that you can subscribe to, which look, this is not an ad. I by no means am like saying this is sponsored. I'm just telling you. Um, but anyway, so depending on what your metabolism is, I think you answer some questions and then they kind of like give you your eating plan with recipes, which is nice. But when I met with Dr. Gulia, I continued to have a weekly phone call with him all throughout uh, well, I don't know. I did it for a couple of months. I really did because I wanted to commit to myself that I was going to eat better. And just the way that I was eating was totally different than anything you ever could imagine with a, and I'm using air quotes, like a diet, because it wasn't a diet. It was just changing my eating habits. And I was eating like six times a day. There were times when I would actually say to him on the phone, like, I can't eat anymore. Like, can I please, please like eliminate some of this food? Um, cause it was constant. And, um, because the whole mindset is like, you keep your metabolism burning throughout the day. You drink a ton of water. So anyway, um, long story short, but basically I did that for quite some time and I very much got back into great shape in, in my opinion, like I felt good and, um, I've kind of fallen off the wagon, um, in over the holidays and whatnot. And so my goal was to kind of like start back on that, that eating plan. And once I get there, I freaking love it, but it's just a matter of like eliminating all of the trash that I eat all the time and getting back to it. So I said to my husband, I was like, it's like, you know, trying to start a fire. Like you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. And every Monday I would try and I would quit because I would like eat shit. And then I was like, oh, okay. My, my dog is playing with his pet bird in the background. It's actually my cat's bird, but my dog stole it. But anyway, so the point is, is I have now, I think officially got back on my eating well wagon and I've just done it for a couple of days and I already feel so much better. So hopefully that will give me the motivation to keep going. Um, So that's kind of like my fun news. I'm eating better. And I love, I love like all of the recipes and stuff that I make when I'm eating well. But I will tell you, it's such a pain in the ass every single meal to like get in that kitchen and, you know, um, make something instead of just grabbing something like pre-made out of a box, which is convenient. But I think that's kind of like one of the problems of society, right? We all just grab the easy stuff. 
Uh, but anyway, I digress. Okay. So what else is happening? Oh my God. I got my ears pierced yesterday <laughs> because I'm four. Um, well, I decided that I want to, because I'm not a tattoo kind of girl and I don't really do like crazy wild things or anything, but I just think it's super cute when people wear earrings like the whole way up their ear. And I have all these cute little teeny hoops and stuff. And I had one sad ear piercing. And so I thought to myself, back in the day, like junior high, Christy, I would go in my room and pierce my ears on my t- all the time by myself. But I was like, oh, you know, I want my ears pierced up my ear a little bit so I can wear some of these cute little like things. So I went to the mall yesterday. I was returning something. And like a big girl, <laughs> I went to an ear piercing booth and I got my ears double pierced. Um, and I was like laughing the whole time because I'm like, I am literally the oldest person here because everybody else is like bringing in their babies. And I'm like, hi, I'm 44. Can you pierce my ears? I went double pierce. Um, but anyway, so I did that. And then I am actually, next time I go see Chloe in LA or whatever, I'm going to go to like her ear, her piercing guy and I'm going to get a few more like up my ear and I might get my cartilage done. However, I did have that done when I was in high school and I got so infected. It was disgusting. And now I just have like this trauma from it and I'm very afraid of it. But you only live once, right? YOLO. So I may go and get my cartilage pierced. I don't know. But look, it's very fancy. But I will tell you my headphones suck right now because they're like pressing on my ears. Um, But I'm so cool now, right? And Clara looked at me and she goes, I just can't even look at you with double piercings because apparently double ear piercings are offensive. Okay. So enough about me. I feel like I went on and on and on and on. Um, So we're going to get right into this week's guest because um, I thought this would be something really interesting or I thought she would be someone very interesting to chat with because um, she, well, first of all, Sarah Rice, my guest this week is a former reality star. And so obviously anytime I'm talking to a reality person, I absolutely can, um, you know, chat all day just about the, the production and everything that went on behind the scenes. So that's always fun. But Sarah's like an old school reality person because she was on The Real World and then she was on The Challenge. And she is now the co-host of the Brain Candy podcast with the lovely Susie, who I had on episode two. And Sarah is actually also a family and... Oh, I can't remember exactly. Um... Let me make sure I'm saying this right. She is a family and couples therapist associate, I believe. She'll talk about it there because I don't want to like, um, I don't want to screw it up because I know it's very specific. Uh, but Sarah's amazing because she has just such an effervescence about her. But we talked a lot about, you know, relationships and quarantine and how that affected you. And just, I don't know, she's very wise and insightful. And I think you are going to love the interview so much. So let's get in to the interview with Sarah Rice. Why, hello, Sarah. Welcome to Christie's Couch. I'm so excited to have you this week. How are you? Hello. I'm doing great. You know, it's like uh, as a uh, therapist or a therapist, associate therapist, um, usually we're like, uh, you know, like the whole therapist on the couch thing. So it's kind of fun to come on a podcast where uh, I'm on your couch this time. Amazing. Well, that's kind of the whole premise of it is um, I'm doling out totally unqualified advice to people from my couch. So now we have somebody who actually might be a little bit qualified. Love that. (laughs) I mean, just read a couple books and took a few classes. That's like the only thing that makes me a little more. I mean, that's more than me. I only speak from life (laughs) advice and things that I've screwed up and so like, that well, is sometimes the best learner or the best teacher. Yeah, like just don't do this. Like don't don't make these choices. Those are poor choices. That's kind of the like I the angle. Say, do as from. I say, not as I do. Hundred so percent. That is um that has been basically my mantra as a mother. <laughs> That was my mother's mantra, which is where I learned that. Amazing. Well, she sounds like a very wise woman. Uh, she is. Okay, ladies, show of hands. Who, the moment they walk into the door, rips off their bra? 
right? Can you see my hand raised? It's actually raised because, uh, yeah, because bras aren't really comfortable, are they? No, for the most part, they suck. And for years, I've been like fighting with this whole notion that bras have to be miserable. Uh, but that's not true anymore because I've totally been proven wrong. And the company that I discovered that actually changed my mind is Third Love. So Third Love uses the measurements of millions of women to design bras with all day comfort and support. And they stand behind their products. They have a perfect fit promise. So if you don't love your new bra, you can exchange or return it for free for 60 days. And there are more than 80 sizes. Who knew there were so many bra combinations, right? But every third love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, love that, and a scratch-free band. And the cups range from AA to I, including half cups half cups for real and bands from 30 to 48. So how this works is you take the fitting room quiz and it's a fun and it's a really easy interactive experience that focuses on breast, size, breast shape, I should say, size, current fit issues, and your personal style to deliver bras and underwear that are perfect for you. And throughout the whole thing, if you have any questions, there are fit stylists available for one-on-one chats to answer any questions that you have. And like I said, Third Love stands behind their perfect fit promise. If you don't love it, you can exchange it or return it and it's free. So Third Love creates better bras that focus on what matters, keeping you comfortable. Hell yeah, I will take that. But also Third Love gives back and they donate all of their gently used bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay area and across the United States. So Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash couch now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash couch for 20% off today. You're going to love it. So, well, okay. So I'm excited to have you because obviously, like you mentioned, you are a therapist. So you're a marriage and family therapist, correct? Yeah, not a uh, marriage and family therapist associate. I have to say that uh, until I am fully licensed and I have to finish all my hours before that. Got it. So I got about 900 out of 3,000 more to go and we're almost there. Well, then you almost can like, we can take off a little, well, like you can just be a, a family and um, a marriage and family therapist ass because you've already yes, completed exactly. like yes. the end of the associate. So you're getting there. Yes. Um, now I also know that you are a co-host of brain candy podcast with the illustrious yes. Susie, who I know very yes. well. Um, so I knew Susie before, before Lincoln, I'm sure you've known Susie longer, but I always take it back to like the birth of the children. Cause Lincoln was kind of like the dance yes. mom's mascot baby. Well, you know, you, you were in a very lucky position because you got to see him as a baby more than I did. Susie was so secretive about her pregnancy. I literally have seen one photo of her pregnant and she was in Pittsburgh then and I was in California. So I didn't get to see her as much. And then when he was, when Lincoln was born, I like didn't see him for, oh gosh, the first like year and a half or so. Ah. And you know, I didn't become besties with Lincoln until Oh, he so you're Lincoln's older. bestie? Well, I mean, you know, I always just like to tell him that, but I, I have to fight. Susie really holds that position. So. I'm a little bit jealous because Lincoln's really I cute. love him so much. So <laughs> he we, is like, cute. we are like, get it. We get into trouble together. Like we went on a road trip and, uh, you know, of course, Lincoln and I are in the back seat, and we play 20 questions together and Susie's like, okay, that is enough. Addie. You guys have to stop. And I just <laughs> am encouraging him and we're like telling bad jokes and it's so fun. So I love him. I do love that. Okay. So you're like the bad aunt. Love it. I get oh, it. For sure. For yes. sure. And I I give him all the presents that like, like silly string every single Christmas birthday. He's getting silly string. Oh the end. yeah. So. I would hate you in my life. I really yeah. would. Although ah, yeah. I gotta be like that. I, yeah, I love that. Although I have to say before I had children, I was the aunt who always gave, um, musical instruments. I, I have, oh, a, there you go. Yeah, I have a lot of karma coming back to me now in my life yeah. from everyone I ever did that to. I'm like, Oh that's that's a mean gift. But anyway, so, all right. Well, 
even before that, before you were even a Brain Candy co-host, I know that you have reality experience, which yes. is always fun to talk about. So do you want to tell, and like, do you want to catch everybody up on what your reality experience was? Yes. Because you're so like an OG. I was on, yeah. You know, it's so funny that now I really do fit into that because it's been over a decade that I've been, you know, more than that since I started. I started in 2000 and. Eight, I think, is when the first show aired. But yeah, I was on The Real World Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we were the first cast that had eight people. And it was a real experience. We were also, they were doing kind of a, a compare and contrast with uh, changing the format a little bit. They were seeing whether, it was right when Jersey Shore came out. Okay. And there, there was a lot of attention on this more like, party life like the like jersey shore style sure and uh so they did our season where we were eight people who were uh like activists and you know starting our own like nonprofits and like speaking out on on big issues and rock the vote and all this kind of great stuff and uh then the next season they did cancun and if I wanted to see which one was going to be like got you know the most audience attention, and uh, it was not our season. I was so we just going to say we got the older we got the older crowd. The OG people like our season, but some people didn't were not as big of fans. You either like love it or you hate it, which is kind of like me how people feel about me in general. So oh know. well, we have that in common. I'm very yes. I'm very polarizing as a cast member or as a human. I should I'm say boring. Like you know nobody. Nobody, nobody hooked up on our season. Nobody like he got. I mean, we like gotten like political debates and like so. You know. So you were the more cerebral season. We'll say. Yes. Got it for sure. Got it. Yeah, got it. for sure. And you know, and like it's funny. I almost like doubt like say that like it's like a negative thing. But when it comes to you know like uh, uh, the the brand that you get or like the the. Uh, typecast whatever you want to call yeah. it that happens you know i we, that i definitely left with like the label of like oh she's like the nerd who you know i was actually just going to say like it might not have had like the biggest ratings impact but i definitely think that that has more longevity because you can there's so many party people out there like you know it's great That's for true. a season but then it gets old and a new party girl comes into town unless you're there's, snooky I, then that's different get, right right like right. that's a yes, very specific yes. person that's really true. Yes. Yeah. So then after I did my season, I went on right after to do the challenge because mm-hmm. that's really what I wanted to do. And that's where I met Susie. My first uh, season was her last season. Also where I met Adam because he was the sound guy on there. Okay. And uh, then I came in second place on that one with my partner and we, you know, almost beat – Susie beat me. So, you know, <laughs> so amazing we're still friends after that. It's okay though. It really is. It's totally fine. Yes. Love yeah. that. Well, I love that you knew that you were going into the real world with the challenge in mind. Like I do love oh, that. Yeah. That's kind of like pre-Bachelor. Like, well, I guess The Bachelor was happening then. But it's kind of like how everybody goes on The Bachelor now planning to be The Bachelorette. Uh-huh. Yes. That, well, it's so interesting that they – that really shows that maybe the goal isn't the relationship. No. Oh, my God. Do they pretend uh, that it's still the relationship? I guess so. I don't know because I I can't watch that show. Interesting. That's one of the only I, shows I can watch. Do you know why? No. Wow. What? Tell me, please. Because they can break the fourth wall. I have a really hard time with shows that they don't break the fourth wall on, but because they talk about it being... Like, they don't specifically say The Bachelor, but they talk about, like, the situation. And, like, Survivor, I can watch that because they break the fourth wall. I have a hard time watching shows like The Housewives because we ha- were forced into this narrative that you pretend that that's real when... Right. It, I don't know. that Maybe because... The Housewives is more similar to the way Dance Moms was formatted. So I don't know. Uh Uh-huh. See, now I love The Housewives. Yep. I can't watch it. That is so funny. Mm -hmm. I tried the other day. uh, I was, where was I? Oh, I was like in Costa Rica. And there were very limited television show stations. And the only one that had a show uh, in English, uh, they were playing Temptation Island. Oh, my God. Oh, (laughs) my God. God, yeah, that should not be uh, like. I'm not kidding. I know there's going to be some. Se- there are serious, like ethical implications <laughs> to what is happening in reality <laughs> television. I was like, oh my god, give every one of these cast members my phone number 
right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's somebody it's needs wild. to intervene. Wild. It what is, is wild. happening on reality TV? I know. Well, so. I think it's just like it's pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. But then also, I also think that there's been a little bit of pulling back on some like in some regards, but I don't know. That one specifically is not. That one's like, hey, we're just going to like push it to the, like, I don't know. Uh, like the, the yeah. we're going to push you to your moral edge. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like those kind of, you know, I do, however, then I, I, I think about, oh man, am I just protecting these, these people? Because, you know, maybe they don't know what they're getting into, but I think about myself and the opportunity that I had to watch myself from a third person perspective mm-hmm. and see how I was really forced me to take a look at some of the not so flattering personality <laughs> traits, we will say, yeah. and work on those things, you know? And, and so I really did. I recognized the ways that I maybe spoke down to people. I recognized the way that I didn't speak up for myself in some situations. Okay. I recognized, you know, the times when I let my emotions and the feelings in the moment kind of get the best of me. And so it really helped. And then I think, well, how, who am I to say that these people can't have the same experience and, 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 you know, won't benefit from going through the same thing. But I just also see the other side of it when people really don't benefit and it's, it's yeah. Sad. I think the first season of a reality show, you're always so naive. And then the second season, you're the biggest asshole because you've watched yourself yep. on television. And then you become a little bit more like, huh, self important, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Dad. Yep. 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 For sure. For oh, sure. Oh, God. I was awful on that second season. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Fresh meat. And you know what? I got it handed to me and I was like, I was out of there. They they kicked me out and or voted me off and I lost. I think I was the third one to go home. And that was totally fair. And I watched that and I was like, Sarah, no, this is not who you are. You're an that asshole. Was, that is a season. Oh, <laughs> ass. Hull. That is the season that goes in the garbage for me. But yep, mm. yeah, it's it's you're so right with that. Yeah, it's wild, and I always think it's super wild when um, people say, "Oh, do they manipulate things?" Well, yeah, of course they do. But also, I've started to look at things that I'm that I think of, like when you get in an argument with somebody, everybody has a different perspective, and I sort of look at reality mm. television. I'm like, well, maybe that wasn't just my perspective. Maybe I'm a total asshole. So, yeah, well, yeah, and and I also feel like we're we're exaggerated versions of ourselves. Oh my god. There. There's something about having a camera that makes it more exaggerated so you see this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Th- this this thing that's like, oh, the monster really comes out. Yeah. I I tell like when I speak to all my sorority women, I try to explain it like do you know the girl? Because we all know the girl. We probably were the girl at some point who the moment somebody who you're interested in walks into the room, you become a bigger version of yourself, like all attention on you. Like we're the mm-hmm. same way with cameras, I think. I think reality yes. people are oh, yes. the exact same way when you see a camera. You're like yes. all attention on me. Like you want that. Yeah. It, it's just you wouldn't be cast on a show if you weren't like that. And the whole system rewards it. Like mm-hmm. it, it's what what – What's happening that we don't even realize or we're not even aware of is that we're in a we're in a system that perpetuates that and gives us it it's rewarding that kind of behavior. A hundred percent. It incentivizes it. It goes, it says, we're going to incentivize this and, and you get more attention. And the more you do that, the more we will talk to the more people and which is then makes you turn it up and then you kind of become – get lost in there and, and who am I? Am I this thing, this this costume, this character, this like, you know, I almost imagine it as like one of those like suits that people like the, the um, like costumes at Disneyland that they get into oh, that, like, okay. you know, are really big, you know, <laughs> yeah. and like, they, like they're huge and then we like become like the bigger in life like, kind of things of ourselves, and then we take, we like step out of that and we're like, oh, little tiny people inside there. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna go like the Buffalo Bill skin suit thing. I'm like, wait, where is she going with this? What? what? I don't even know what that is. So. Oh, it's like Silence of the Lambs, where like oh, serial yes. killers no, make suits that. out of people. Um, well, mm-hmm. good. I'm glad. 
in the past couple of years, I have definitely become a lot more health conscious. Um, I try to eat clean. I definitely at least try to go for a walk every day if I'm not totally exercising. And I've added a daily multivitamin into my routine. And I feel like we deserve to know what we're putting into our bodies, especially when it comes to something that we're taking every day, right? And that is one of the reasons I love Ritual because Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality ingredients in bioavailable forms that your body can actually use. You won't find sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, or artificial colorants, and this is my favorite part, uh, the fresh taste and delayed release capsule design make taking my vitamins easy. Now, I've been taking Ritual for a little bit over a year, and I can say that that time release, no nausea feeling is absolutely the thing that has changed my vitamin experience. I didn't like taking vitamins before because every time I did, I felt sick, and I don't get that feeling with Ritual. Also, a multivitamin should contain key ingredients and forms that your body can actually use to help fill the gaps in the diet, not any shady extras. And Ritual's delayed release capsule design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 in just two daily pills. Amazing, right? Plus, your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping always. So you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. So get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash couch to start your ritual today. Uh, so yes, I mean, I could obviously talk to you about reality television all day. Cause I do think that there's like such a fascinating study there. So I think that there are psychology classes all around the country or the world who could benefit from like a deep dive into reality because yes. I think there's so much there. Um, but it's so weird that reality now is refers to reality TV, not actual reality, which is like so weird. Oh, I never even thought about it. Yeah, Yeah. you're right. You're totally right. I have a sign in my laundry room that says avoid reality at all costs. And everyone like snickers at it. I'm like, no, no, reality TV. Like that's just what it means to me, you know? That is so funny. Yeah, Yeah, I actually think Susie took a picture of it when she was here um, (laughs) specifically because she's like, oh. And I was like, yeah, that sign, right? I mean, it speaks to you. She gets it, yeah. So, okay, so I have to ask. So you're obviously Mm -hmm. a very studied person. I know you studied at Oxford, which I saw that and I was like, damn. Like, that's very impressive. I mean, it was like an exchange program. Like, you know, don't get like too excited. I'm not like a a rogue scholar. No, but don't downplay that. I would put that, like, I would have that tattooed on me, like Oxford. Oh my gosh, so funny. Studied at Oxford. Uh, No, but I think that's super, that's super impressive and speaks to like your, um, you know, just your, your resume or your pedigree, so to speak. But so my question was, when did you decide that you were interested in therapy specifically? Oh, I think I've always wanted to do this. You know, I really saw myself as being a therapist from like day one. I mean, I can't, I think maybe it was the things that I went through in my own life. You know, I experienced a lot of trauma when I was growing up Mm -hmm. and as an, you know, adult and and our young adult. And uh, I always, you know, got uh, recognized that we sometimes were not in control of our mind and our mind was almost in control of us. Mm -hmm. And so I saw through therapists and through just like observations, like how people can help how a therapist or somebody like that can serve to kind of help others uh, uh, learn how to control their mind. And my mom was really like that. My mom is a psychic and she works as like a psychic life coach. And so I think really I got into the therapy field because I needed to understand like the 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 science of why of how she can do what she does got it and and I I have the, you know a, a you know I, I just spent um, like a month with her in Costa Rica and um and I was just listening to you know some of her sessions and like listening to her talk and and uh, you know there's no confidentiality with psychics so like you know I could listen sure, to her of course a little more and um 
Uh, well, of course, she does keep it confidential. I shouldn't say that. Just like me eavesdropping on what she's saying because I can't hear what they're saying. Well, sure. But I was like, oh, so much of what she says sounds so similar to what I say. It's so like we're, we're doing a lot of the same stuff. I mean, she, however, says no because I, I, I hold them accountable and she more just connects to uh, uh, like the big picture kind of plan. And, you know, I kind of like maybe – yeah, that's really it. I hold people more accountable. But this was just something that I saw in in my life and growing up, and I was like, I need to under, I need to study the mind. And mm-hmm. so I went to school to study psychology first, and I got my undergrad in, in psych. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, it's just fascinating to me. And then I realized that I didn't want to do as much of the uh, research side of it. And the science side of it or the prescribing side of it, uh, I wanted to do more of like, you know, meds and stuff like that. I wanted to do more of the talk therapy okay. and that is marriage and family therapy. So, cause that's like the real, like the, the, it's basically like a personal trainer for your brain. Sure. Oh my God. I that's totally it. believe in therapy. So you're like preaching to the choir. Yeah. So it's like, we have a personal, like, and yes, are there some people who could just go to the gym and work out on their own? Sure. Yes. Those people go handle your shit. But some people are like, I have never seen the inside of a gym. I don't even know where these muscles are. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm in a cycle that I really don't like. And so I step in and I'm like, hey, see that right, that weight right there. That's like a hundred pounds. Let's try to lift that up. Okay. And here's the muscles that we do that with. Wow. It's really heavy. And then the more we practice, the more we do it, a hundred pounds is still a hundred pounds, but you get better at it. Yep. And you're like, oh, I know how to do this. Now I can like do cool moves with it and whatevs. And like, I'm getting stronger. And then you go and like work on, you know, other muscles around whatever personal trainers do. And, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> see, I, I know nothing about that world. But, but it's okay because no, that's not what you're works. claiming to know anything about. So you're right. Good. That's you're totally true. Good. Yeah. So I, so I do that for the brain. And so I really, and then I just love it. I'm like, I, I, I feel like it is one of those, I so reward. I mean, it's so rewarding. I see change in people mm-hmm. and I watch, I watch it happen. It's like the most fun thing ever to watch somebody come in and talk about themselves in one way. And I see that their brain is tricking them into thinking that they are not good enough or not. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. It's so amazing. Aww. And it does make me emotional because I freaking love it. So Aww. it's so silly. I'm crying. It's it's only because I'm premenstrual. And so, you know, the tears are like no. right there. <laughs> no, That's he, how it is, right? There's no so, need to make excuses for sure. You yes, can cry no but, matter what. And I'm human. So, so yeah. So I just, and then I see them as like, you know, time goes on and as people progress and I see them being able to interrupt those thoughts and being able to say, but I, but that's ridiculous. And I know that blah, 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 blah. And then soon that goes away and soon they just go, well, that's bullshit because I know I'm worth it and I, I'm not going to deal with that anymore. And then they break this, that cycle or they're out of it or they see themselves different. And it's so fun because once we, you people learn that, it's like tying – it's learning how to tie your shoes. You don't unlearn it. You don't – you may like – or maybe tie – Tying your shoes like maybe a little too. <laughs> I little know what too, you mean. Uh, uh, but like riding a bicycle or, or something that maybe you haven't done in a while. Like it's right. a little shaky when you first try, but you're like, oh yeah, I remember this. Like I, they're they're we're like creating new pathways in the brain for believing at, at who you are and the self worth going up. And when that goes up, everything else in life goes up. <sighs> That's it. No, I agree. And like, that's exactly, no, it's not long winded. I think it all makes total sense. And I think that people just need to stop sometimes and remember those things because I think we get caught up in the daily like madness of life and we forget that. Um, so Mm -hmm. it is nice. I, I freaking loved going to my therapist because I get to sit and talk about myself for 30 or an hour every week. I say that I can look and, and like, you know, it's so funny when clients will try, you know, will say, Oh, like, I'm sorry, or, or, you know, you don't want to hear this. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to hear everything. And there are, it's like no one we get to brag to. You get to talk to your therapist and like your mom, maybe, if you yeah. have one of those moms <laughs> that you ha- will listen to those kind of things and likes that. But even then, who knows? So like, yes, tell your therapist all that stuff. And I love it. I want to, I feel like, because the more we, we can like, reflect that those positive vibes and that joy the more you can radiate more of that in your life totally agree totally agree so and we all share the shit yep don't we yep 
Oh, my God. I just realized that. Everybody's like, oh, my God, let me tell you about this awful thing that happened. But rarely are we like, oh, my God, let me tell you about this most amazing thing that happened. Because we're like, oh, we don't want to brag. We don't want people to. No. Say that thing. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I actually never really thought about that, but you're Me actually either. right. Look at us. Uh-huh. It's like a therapy session right now. It is. I love it. I love it. And I'm sure. People I mean, are I've already it. cried. So yeah. <laughs> you're good. You're you're well on your way. That's I think that def- one of the defining factors of a therapy session is you definitely have to cry during it. Oh my god, you tricked me. You said it's it's the couch thing. It is the couch. I Look, see. you get on the couch and you you cry. You cry. It's a thing. <laughs> I just automatically when I walk into my therapist, I just literally automatically pick up the um box of tissues and sit it down next yeah, to me. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I'm it, like, it's oh, all, yeah. it's all of us. It's all of us. We are all we're all we all do it. I'm going to need it. Feels these. so good. The, yes. Absolutely. So what have you seen? Because I mean, obviously the world has been crazy in the last year. Have you seen a big shift in people being more tuned into therapy and the benefits or people challenging themselves? Or I actually, what I should say is, are you seeing people just really realizing that they don't want the shit in their lives and they're willing to get rid of it, even though it might seem hard, but now we're like, Hey, life is short. What are you seeing? I think all of the above. I think you are really right with people kind of recognizing, you know, what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to hold on to? What's important to me? Mm -hmm. That I think is a big one. You know, some things you realize like, is this, is this that important? Is this Mm -hmm. what really matters? And you kind of narrow in on that, you know, and it was, it's interesting. I, I read this article and I can't remember where it was, but there was a there's a mathematician who came up with what is essentially like dog years for relationships oh, during interesting. this pandemic time and so oh. he looked at a f- different factors to come up with how long was this like really like in relation for a relationship oh god so what please tell at, me it's fascinating he looked at uh pre-pandemic average hours of cohabitating uh-huh um he looked at uh, a boredom factor and considered uh-huh. cu- times cu- the the time that couples spent together, and the boredom factor multiplies uh, the pandemic time spent together times two. He found out. Oh, so the uh, average time that pre pandemic that couples spent together was in like a whole year was uh, one thousand six hundred ninety seven. Okay. So then you have that, you have a multiplier of two. And then he also looked at the hours the couple spent together during an average week during the pandemic, which was 76, almost 77 hours oh, together fuck. a week. Okay. That's, that's more a than, lot. Yeah, that's more than shooting a reality show. Holy and, crap. Yeah. Then there was what they called the T factor, the tier factor, so the numbers of weeks working from home together since the pandemic began, <laughs> which they found the average was 28 weeks. Oh, Then my they God. looked at the... Which is a lot. Yep. Then they looked at the hours spent together as a couple on average during the week of pandemic, and they spent uh, an hour of or an average of twelve point three hours together. Then they looked at the number of weekends since the pandemic began, and the calculations based on this was forty three weekends together since you know during the time of the research. Good and they God. found during with all of this that one year during the pandemic was the equivalent of four years in a relationship. Oh, wow. Okay, that so it's makes sense not for surprising people. that people are breaking up. Yes. Hmm. No, I mean, no, not surprising at all. Yeah. Oh, God. Four years. Okay, so I've now been married 21 years, but really it's more like 25 at this point. Plus, There you go. I have to actually say he forgot a really important uh I don't children. know, variable in the, Well, yeah, children, but no, all oh. of my online shopping purchases with his office oh. in the front of the house, like that is something to take into consideration. Because <laughs> yes. he took over my office and he sits right next to where everything is delivered. Oh. And I spend so much of my day trying to like circumvent the delivery man just because oh I don't want to hear his mouth. <laughs> oh, that would... I would, I, I would not be able to do that. That would really give me a lot of anxiety. Yeah, it does give me it's, You know what? It's like everybody's, that's really interesting, okay? Because do you know for a fact that he doesn't, like, he doesn't like that or doesn't approve of that or makes, con- like, I have no idea. Say? Well, I mean, I oh, think at first. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah, I Excellent. think at first it was a little bit like, 
like the comments, but now I just have such anxiety. Like I okay. give myself anxiety about it. This is fantastic. I'm so glad you said that because it really highlights the point I wanted to make. Mm-hmm. So, and it always works this way because this is how it goes. So you are doing what we're calling, what we call mind reading. Oh, so yes. Yes. I'm very good at are it. Not going, oh my gosh, this is what he's thinking right now. Mm-hmm. He's seeing those Amazon boxes come in. You are using your own. And anytime we feel that, we, we're like holding up a mirror to ourself. Anytime we have that, like, oh my God, he's thinking this. You can almost imagine like a mirror because that really shows this is what we are thinking. Yep. yep. I am thinking that he's thinking this. No. That and- is based on your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings about that. (laughs) Every single one of us has an Amazon package delivery thing. For me in in my marriage, when, before I got divorced, it was making the bed. I Uh. was convinced that my ex-husband thought every time he would see the bed unmade or if I didn't make it real quick, he would think, oh my gosh, she's so lazy or whatever. Uh After about a year, I asked him, I said, you know, does it bug you that I, when I don't make the bed? And, you know, because I always get a lot of anxiety thinking that, like, you think I'm lazy or something like that if I don't make the bed. He looked at me and he said, Sarah, I can tell you with all honesty, I have not once in our entire relationship ever thought about how you make the bed. Amazing. But and you're I was so like, stressed out about it. I wasted so many hours. And what it does is it creates this ripple effect. So we can think about all of our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions are all connected in this like triangle. So we have the thought. Here you are with a thought of, oh my gosh, my husband is going to, you tell me, what's the thought that you have in your head when you see those packages? Oh, he's going to bitch at me. Blah, 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 blah. He's going to bitch at me. Blah, 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 blah. Then that thought, what kind of feelings does that create for you? Anxiety. Like it gives Anxiety. me, it makes my stomach hurt. Like it gives, my stomach hurts. Mm-hmm. It makes me like That's like not nervous. a feeling. So give me like an actual, oh, nervous. That's a good one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then when you're, when you're feeling anxious and nervous and what's your thought about like yourself? Like, give, like what's, what's then your I'm feelings bad, about? That I'm like, wrong. Bad. Okay. I'm wrong. Oh, good. Great. Then when you're feeling that way. What are the actions that you take? What, how are you at, how productive are you? How right. are you? None. What are the actions? You're distracted. You you're like, yes. ner- like you can't focus. Yep. You start yep. to feel sneaky. And I'm like, yes. wait, I'm not sneaky. I just bought the shit I wanted. Yes. And then when you feel like that, you get more th- and we go back and connect that to the thoughts. And then that creates more thoughts. Oh my gosh. I'm, uh, look at how I'm sneaky. Mm-hmm. Look at how I'm doing this. Then that creates more intense feelings. Well, I must, I'm, I'm bad. I'm, that intensifies that. Whoa. We just totally like t- that took over that single initial thought that isn't freaking true. Just took over your day and created this spiral of thoughts, feelings, and actions. If we replace that original thought with the fact, what is like a, a, a way to 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 change? What's like the the way to challenge that thought? A thought that wouldn't create that feeling of of anxiety. What's like the truth? Like you said, I can get what I want. Yeah, and like he usually he doesn't care. Like he really usually doesn't. he doesn't care. These are my purchases. I can get whatever I want. He doesn't care. What feelings does that create? Oh, I just had such a sense of calm. <laughs> calm. <laughs> yeah. Calm. And when you're calm, how do you move throughout your day? What are your actions Yeah, like? you're much, much more. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're just a, lo- a lot more relaxed. Yes. You're a lot. Probably less agitated. Yeah. Probably don't get like, you know, freak out and take it out on the kids, whatevs. You're not, yeah, you don't have that, like, and then, and then our other, then the thought that comes after is, oh, what am I going to order on Amazon next? Yeah. <laughs> Which gives there me a great sense of, like, excitement and joy. There you go. And that's it. We just have to re- realize, how, when do we interrupt that, that little, that triangle, that thought, feeling, behavior triangle, and change the original thought? Mm-hmm. And you can write this down. Oh, I really recommend putting it on paper. Draw okay. a little triangle. Put thoughts at the top, feelings on one side, and actions on the other. You can even look up online, feeling, list of feelings, feeling wheel. I love doing that. Ooh, and then feeling list- wheel? I've never heard oh, of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, feeling wheels. Those are great. It's like a wheel, and there are different layers. So we all have seen the movie Inside Out. Uh-huh. And Inside Out, those are our 
primary feelings. Those are the ones that we can trace everything down to these, these primary feelings of sadness, of you know, anger, however, not a primary feeling, but we'll, we'll let it go for the movie. Um, joy. I was just going to say, we can't forget joy. Yes, of course. Uh, I was her for Halloween, so never going to forget her. So, yes, fear under there. So, and then those feelings, when they have like the first ring, and then there's another ring around that, and those are the secondary feelings, the things that we see like... Um, uh, oh gosh, let me think of one. Like instead of being angry, it would be uh, like hurt or, well, actually under mad. We, like angry would be like a secondary one. Then maybe selfish or hateful. And then we also have the third the ring, which is like tertiary feelings, which are like um, frustrated or mm-hmm. irritated. So somebody will be like, oh, I'm so frustrated. Well, what's up below that? Well, I'm angry. Mm-hmm. Well, what's below that? Well, I'm really mad. I'm mad about this thing that happened. So we go through those feelings and get to like, what's the deep down one? And when you can identify that, it it helps to find out what it really is is making you mad. Yeah. Because usually it's not the thing that you think it is that's on the out that made you frustrated. It's never the thing. See, the, 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 yes, yes, yes. Woo. Love it is it. never the thing. It's always something more. Never the for thing. Sure. And anybody who's in a relationship knows that. It's not the bed. No, it's not the, no, it's the resentment. Did you do the dishes? Or- <laughs> it's not the sponge left in the sink. It's not any of that shit. No, it's the it's the underlying resentment or whatever. It's, like, the, mm-hmm. it's the, I don't feel loved right now. I feel mad that you're not, give, I, or I feel sad that you're not giving me the attention that you used to, whatever the heck it is. And when we have to identify what that feeling is and ask for what it is that we need from our partner when yeah. we I do identify that. Yeah, that's true. Whew. I know. There's mm-hmm. a lot. Jesus. Okay. You're unpacking yeah. a lot. So now we know Jesus. that that COVID relationships are like dog years. We know that yes. um, it's never the thing. And we know that reality TV sucks. So this has been a really helpful <laughs> episode so far. Uh, but wait. Okay. So uh, I, know I feel that- like you've asked me two questions too. And I have just bogarted your whole. No. I love that. I tend to talk <laughs> on top of people. So I love somebody who will talk because I'm always like, uh, I feel like I'm constantly Like, and tell me this and tell me that, but, um, Mm -hmm. you did bring up something that I have to ask you because I know that you are a Pixar stan and I am like a Disney lover in my heart and I have a a very, very specific love for Pixar. So what's your favorite Pixar movie? Ooh, you know, it goes back and forth. Um, I really love, I mean, my favorite of all time, I'm not kidding when I say I can quote Toy Story from beginning to end nonstop. Uh Uh-huh. Toy Story is my favorite. Like the entire the trilogy. Best. Well, no, it's four now, but the entire series, it's my favorite. It's so good. It is my favorite. It's so good. Yeah. And so, yeah. You know, when I went through my divorce, and now it's been like, I don't know, two years or so, and maybe a little more. And I, it was right before I decided I wanted to get divorced, and or I not wanted to, but like right. when I that, actually that was... verbalized, like said yes, because usually you decide about two years before you actually say it. Uh-huh. And uh, so... Uh, I was uh, uh, just feeling like like sad, and I know that the reason I did this was because I needed some like comfort and something that felt nostalgic. I went on eBay and I bought the f- original Buzz Lightyear and Toy Story. Oh, that like first generation f- with with the actual Buzz uh, like Tim Allen and and uh, uh, Tom Hanks voices in the. Oh my you know, god! It I for, and now if you want to know a little Toy Story factoid um it's tom hanks brother who does all the voices for the recordings and everything because they sound almost exactly alike amazing. and he gives his brother jobs yeah i love that wow i did he not know that. that that's though. amazing oh there you go. yeah actually so it's, it's, it's his brother in the new ones so you have those i love that yes i do love yes. that i made a really amazing <sighs> jesse costume for clara when she was little <gasps> oh, i did that was amazing cute and i have to say that um so my, my older daughter's 19, so she, like, grew up on Toy Story, literally, like, yes, you know, from beginning yes. to end. And when the fourth one, we went to watch it as a family together at the theater. I don't know when it came out. Like, COVID has totally morphed or skewed my sense of time. But when we went yeah. to see that one in the theater, and 
Woody left the Roundup gang, she was sobbing and she's like, it's like my whole childhood has ended. Oh, no. She's like, I can't even think about it. It really, honest to God, makes me misty oh. when I think about that. Because oh. she's like, it's like my childhood has come to an end. And when Andy was going to college, like, she was getting ready to go to college. Like, there's a lot of real parallels for our life oh. in Toy Story. So I sobbed during three, and I she just lost her mind during four. Yeah. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, oh, gosh. So, yes, I love that. But I do, however, love that the new ones are being more inclusive because I think what you touched on there is so true that, like, you, she saw her reflected in mm-hmm. that movie and it touched her and, and was so deep in such, you know, a, a, a beautiful way that I love that newer Pixar movies are doing that for people of all different backgrounds and cultures mm-hmm. and everything because mm-hmm. i think it's so important that we all get the opportunity to connect with characters and see ourselves reflected i do in agree with that yes. television and and media and you know they're not perfect in how they they're doing it and but we're getting better i was so, just gonna say of you course know, yeah. we're like slow improvements over time but i do like uh, you know and i just want more of those stories being told like coco is so beautiful mm-hmm. and you know, Soul, it's just like... I have not yeah. seen Soul yet. Oh, my God. I know. It's so... I know. <sighs> the reason well, I have not watched it yet was because I've heard yes. that it's very emotionally triggering. <laughs> and I was not uh, in a place that I could watch it quite yet. I've heard that it, like, made people sob. And I was just like, I can't. It's, I can't. it's a different kind of sob. It's not okay. like... You know what? It's not like... Inside Out is like a sob, like it's not as or or Up. Remember the uh, opening scene of Up? Uh huh. I can't. It's not like it. that. It's not that. Okay. It's not that at all. It's a it's a it's a cry of like a an awareness, a, okay. a feeling of connection and like an a, a understanding of like it feels very like joyful in a way, you know, like happy or. You're definitely going to cry. Okay. But it's, it's like a good, it's very comforting. Okay. It's like there'll be peace in, in it and going, oh, okay. I have nothing to worry about. And All I know right. what I do need to worry about. And, you know, and okay, I know, I'll take your word for it. That, Maybe yes, it's okay. That, that they did not do it totally perfect with soul and, and representation in some ways of, of you know, Using a white woman's voice and a black man's body, but that's like you know. Oh, I had no idea. And research that oh. on your own, but I do think if we just look at that at, at what it is and the the um, amazing story and what it is teaching, like it is so good mm. and it's so good. Okay, but yeah, I think that watching Soul and watching Inside Out is like getting the the the. It's going to kindergarten and maybe even elementary school for your like emotional health and like (laughs) emotional education i mean there could be worse assignments right what way worse i like assign i've assigned it to clients i've been like okay you need to watch this yeah you need to watch this to understand how your brain works and that there are feelings driving and when really it's that thought that cognitive triangle that i talked about Mm mm-hmm you know, it's like all that stuff that takes over. So, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Inside Out so gets me, good. so I'll have to. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to. I'll have to put um, Soul yeah. on my list and just know oh, that it's, it's okay. So stinking good. I. Oh yeah, it's okay. They're happy tears. They're okay. Like, all right. I was just like, a little like afraid cleansing. because Up has me traumatized. Oh no, it's not that kind of cry. That cry is like. Oh my God, my heart. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I'm so sad right now. This yeah, because that's more everybody's like, grandparents. Yes, this is not that. Okay. That's what Moana did for me. Oh my god. Oh, when her grandmother died in the ocean. Her grandma. Yep. And that happened right after my grandma died. Oh god. And so you were My a mess. grandma said, my grandma said look for the last thing my grandma said to me was look for me in the birds. I'm oh. not kidding. This is 100% a true story. 100%. The morning she died, um, actually I did, I shouldn't say the last thing she said to me, the last thing she said, and this was to my mom because my mom was there when she passed away. I was not, I was there the day before I said goodbye to her and gave her kisses. And then I went home and I was by myself in my house, uh, all windows and all doors shut. She passed away that morning and she was with my mom and I, 
um, this is also a pitch to see the movie Soul, too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, then it's 5 a.m. and I hear this like, and I'm like, what is that tap, tap, tap noise? You're going to tell me it's a bird at your window, aren't you? Not in my window, in my house. No. Inside my house is a little bird Aww. just sitting right and who happens to look just like the bird that I have tattooed on my arm and uh, in my house sitting on my banister. And I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing in here? Aww. All the windows and all the doors Aww. are closed. I don't know how this bird got into my house. It let me pick it up. No. I, yep. I walked it downstairs because it was on the second story banister. I walked it downstairs. I opened the door. I opened my hands to let it fly out. And it just stood there and then just flew right back and stood on the chair. It was in my house two times that week. And I do not know how this bird got into my house. And I didn't know that. I did not know what my grandma said. But my mom called me later that morning to tell me what happened and tell me that she passed away. And then my mom told me, I did not tell her about the birds either. And my mom said, grandma's last words was look for me and the birds. Oh and I God. started bawling. Oh, I bet you sure did. And I said, mom, you'll never believe what just happened this morning. Oh my God. And if that wasn't my grandma, I don't know what, no, what that it was, was your grandma. because I that have, was my grandma. Yes. I have chills all over my body. I cannot believe. That is a believe. 100% hand to God, true story. Your grandma yeah. wanted to say goodbye. Oh, and she always comes and like visit whenever I'm going through something tough. Oh, now you're making me cry. That it's it's she always will show up and or there'll be like a little bird or you know. In fact, actually, when I was talking to you about stuff earlier, there was a little bird that was just sitting and hanging out right here on my little patio, Aww. and she'll just like come down and 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 hang out, say hello. And I, just, I feel like that, you know. Have you watched? There's a Netflix show. Uh, yep, Surviving Death. Sur- I was going to say Surviving. My Death. mom went to that school. What school? Oh, did she really? Yep, the one in England. Wow, that's where she went. She calls it Hogwarts for people. For for <laughs> she calls it real Hogwarts. That she's like, oh, when I was at real Hogwarts, I'm like, yes, mom. That's so cute. That's really. And cute. It's so funny because I told her I was like, mom, have you seen the show? She goes, honey. <laughs> yes, I have, dear. She's like, yeah. She's like, uh-huh. And I, I asked her, I was like, have you seen like, oh, she goes, yeah. Like she says like no big deal. Like, okay. Like, I need, I need an appointment you with your about? mother. This is why I went to school for psychology. Yeah. Because I was like, I need to know why. Uh-huh. And the more I learn, the more I'm like, oh fuck, she's right about everything. It's, I don't know. So. That's crazy. Yeah. So put your mm-hmm. mom on my list of people I want to talk to. Cause I, am oh my God, she would do psychic. your show in two seconds. Yeah, I would love it. She's okay. dying. Dying to. I, I can only give her so much airtime on mine, you know. Yeah. Nope. I'll so, have her on. Like, I would love to talk to She'll take over and it'll just become her show. So she would love, love, love to come on here. And, you know, you think I'm animated and talk a lot. Ha! Ha! ha. Well, I have I'm questions. The, I'm, a, I'm the calm one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the calm one. Same. For sure. Say, Well, I love that. Okay. So... Um, that is really crazy. I only asked specifically because there was the Robin story on survive. I mean, there's a million things on yes. surviving death, but that little Robin who kept coming back, that sounds a lot mm-hmm. like your grandma. Yep. I cannot believe you had She's a bird like that. in your house. That's really in wild. In my house. Mm-hmm. Was your grandmother always- psychic or anything like that? Like your mom? She, she says that she wasn't. Like she said she doesn't believe in any of that stuff, but okay. then she would say things and do things that were very like towards, t- towards the end. Yeah. She would, she was, she would say like, she would talk about like people coming and sitting on the side of her bed. Okay. So she definitely Mm -hmm. has like that, Mm -hmm. that tuned in. That's interesting. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. It very interesting. Oh God. But she would very much, she was so spiritual, but did not know she was. Yes. Like she was very much like, no, no, that's not it. But then would have these messages that were, I was like, grandma. But you are. But she's like, nope, all that's baloney. But like, what happens when you die? She's like, nothing. We're just dirt and worms. Oh my gosh, she sounds like my <laughs> oh, grandmother. Look, there's a little bird. There's the little bird back again. Hi. Oh, yeah. she's, she's she like, heard you talking talk about, about me. I'm yeah. just gonna <laughs> say she heard you. She heard grandma, you, grandma. I know you're very spiritual. She was probably like, but don't tell him that I was like woo woo. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, is that where you're? Because I know that you said that you have a love for like, or you you identify with being witchy. Is that where it comes from? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My I kids mean, are like, very witchy. Both of my girls, like, very much are like we're witchy, and they are freaking witchy. 
Well, cause this is it. All it, like we are we are connected with nature we Mm -hmm. just are that is a fact that is like it's not i'm not like making this stuff up we're none of this is like we that's what i'm saying the more i looked at science the more i was able to realize that we're it's all the same stuff we're just like calling it different things with different languages i do agree with that a hundred percent i mean come on call it whatever you know i have like it you know it going through things I'm going through in my life, I'll just be like, you know, I really just have to trust the universe. How different is that than the person who's like, you know, I really have to put my faith in God. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing I'm saying. We're like, you know, so I know that, that everything is all connected and that the, the, when you go back to, I mean, even in like medicine now, they're, they're being, we're getting more connected to things that are, are natural. And the, and the idea of like what's witchy is really just like, I'm connecting to or or uh, f- uh, harnessing the power mm-hmm. that is in the natural world around me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The same thing. You can look at uh, uh, wind turbines that co- take energy from the wind. Mm-hmm. We're harnessing that energy. Oh, witchy. Oh, you're harnessing the power of nature to use it for energy. Like, okay, there you go, witchy. Uh, I'm going to use like, um, you know, the vibrations of the earth to feel a connection and ground myself and take off my shoes and let the, um, like the ions in my body, like, uh, 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 redu- like connect and reduce the inflammation. This is like fact. Like mm-hmm. I, this is all fact that is happening. Call it witchy call it whatever you want call it science we're it's all the same stuff so i think embracing that and and being recognizing that we have the power to heal ourselves in so many different ways like and taking back that power that we don't need you know like even as a therapist like i'm here to you know just like a personal trainer does like you don't need a, once you get strong once you learn those things you don't need the personal training sure. it's like you are you're the one you have the strength you have the muscles they're your muscles they're your, it's your stuff you yep. can do it all so that's it and i think witchiness is just like like a name for for connecting to that and i love that your daughters do that and oh I my think god it's great. they're so and witchy. i love that it's trendy yeah <laughs> all it is is like getting like listening to yourself and being present in the moment and how different is that than like prayer no, I I have had another guest on here. She's actually an energy therapist in Los Angeles. And like, she says the same thing. She's like, it's just however you package it. She's like, do you call it yes. God? Do you call it source? Do you like believe in science? Do you believe in, you know, the universe? Whatever. It's, it's all connected. It is all, it's the, all same. the same. It's just yeah, it's whatever like- makes you most comfortable and how you think of yeah. things. But I also mm-hmm. think there's a lot of tolerance that can be extended to other people where you like compartmentalize to them and think like, oh, you're different than me. They're not just a, a different not way speaks to them you know something else makes sense in their brain yes see look i'm talking over you right now because i get so excited uh and that would be like saying you're listening to somebody else speak in another language you're like nope 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 that's not you're not saying the same nope that's not what you're saying well yeah yes i am it sounds different right it's the same and how some things don't translate maybe like concepts translate different and you know like don't get stuck on like you say it C, and I say yes, so we're saying different things. No, you're not. Yeah, you're saying, yeah. It, it's, again, I think, though, that the world is being much more tolerant of, well, yes. <laughs> maybe not based on the most it's, recent oh, events. God. However, um, it really is a, 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 like two different, two ends of the spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. Either so much more tolerance or so much less. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other podcast that we could really I get know. into, but um, yeah. for sure. And I do think it's all kind of the same. Okay. So I have to ask you like one of my favorite questions that I sometimes ask people because I do have a lot of young adults who listen to my mm-hmm. podcast and I speak to, what was your biggest adulting fuck up when you were young? Oh my god i mean there's always so many to choose from Uh right i've had Uh so many oh give me one of yours um uh i got married at 23 which i'm still married to him so i can't necessarily say that was a fuck up but that was just a poor choice because i was not emotionally ready to be married at that age um and again, it's not him. Like we're together, but when I look back, yeah. I'm like, oh my god! Like why did I do that? Um, oh my god, it's so 
Yeah. Yeah. But I will say like the thing that I always lean into is um, I rented an apartment way out of my price range and I I was basically broke and I couldn't afford anything. And I was just like, oh my God, like, what am I doing? Um, So that was probably like my most real thing. Yep. Um, I, yeah, I take that back. I don't want to say my marriage. That's terrible. That sounds terrible. It just was not, I was not, I was not emotionally capable to be like in that relationship, but it must've worked because we're still together. And I think with things, with those big things, like when I look back on the big stuff, the stuff that you're, I was like, okay, well, is it getting together with this person? Is it my divorce? Is it getting married? I, I don't have any regrets or I don't, I can't, I feel like we can't look to that, you know, because if I didn't have some of the trauma that I had in the past, I wouldn't be able to, I would have never made it on the real world. Yeah. I would have never been able to do the things I do or help the people. It's like, uh, though, I think that all those things happen for a reason. It's like the story is already written. We're just acting it out. Yeah. The thing that is the, I love that you said rented the apartment that was too much for me <laughs> because it's no. really like yeah. the, it, the, what is the the thing that like was like the crowbar to my knees like oh god i shouldn't have done that like or oh it's really almost like my own my own i thought i knew more than i did situation or i thought i had all the info Mm -hmm. and i went in there and i was like "Eh, okay so i have two now another one just popped in my head so number one I went in, I got a great job. I landed, which I highly recommend doing this. I contacted a company that didn't, that was a hair care company that didn't sell. I moved to San Francisco. They didn't sell the product that I loved in the beauty supply stores up in San Francisco. And I contacted the company. I was like, what the heck? Your stuff is the best. How come it's not in there? And they were like, you want a job selling it in salons there? And I was like, yep, I do. And I was barely 21. And everybody else was so much older than me. I was on salary. They gave me a car allowance. I was like in way over my head. But I was like, went, went for it. I definitely think I didn't put in the um, work that was required sure. to do that job. So that also, um, I wish I would have been a little more serious about the job then. Well, you were but 21. Went, you're like, woohoo. Yes. Like, look at all this. Woohoo. Yeah. Right. It was crazy to me. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that I just did that. So like, you know, just like if you feel like you want something, just just freaking do it. Who cares? And like, go for it. What's the worst they can say? You know? No. They could have answered the email. Like, I didn't, you know, so. I fully recommend doing that. Um, But uh, uh, the big mistake was I went into the car dealership and I was like, I got a $300 a month car car, uh, uh, allowance. What do you got? Mm-hmm. What a freaking idiot. Yeah. You know what I left with? A car that I should have been paying $175 a month for. And I was paying three hundred. Oh no! I right, d- they saw you coming, dummy. and they were like, okay. the, "And I went in there, and he was like, well, you know, like, no price negotiation whatsoever. Like, what? You don't tell them that, Sarah. No. So that was so dumb of me. And then the other one, um, I do have some regrets about some of not being tattooed, but I'd rather not have two revolvers with roses oh. on my hips. <laughs> pointing at my (laughs) that would be nice especially since i'm so anti-gun and i'm gonna have to like explain to my children one day like no you see how there are like roses around them that's because like i think nature should like take over i've like thought about all of this it's ridiculous i love the plan i love the plan like, like, so that's one where I could have, you know, maybe done a little more. Maybe uh, made uh, better choice. Yeah. Well, maybe see, made better choices. I so. tell my 19 year old all the time. I'm like, don't commit to a tattoo, just piercings, because you can at least take those out. I'm like, you're going to, she's Even too those fickle. I kind of regret. Yeah. I, I want to get like, I had my, uh, uh, like Monroe, they call it like the above your lip, like little Marilyn Monroe yep, thing. Yep. And I, when I was on the, the real, real world too, and the one I had before that, my lip below pierced ridiculous. And now I look back and I'm like, Oh my God. Uh, and I want to get them like filled in or something. I don't know. Like they can put like a stitch on the inside because it looks, it's like I have a hole and it's uh. really silly. And I, now I, I mean, it looked cool as shit then, what else? But you know, of and the tattoos, I say, I really do think that, it, you know, cause people would always say like, are you going to regret them? I think this is the one part, time in my life where it does feel a little bit regretty, but that's only because 
I don't think we're quite there with the technology to get the tattoos removed without tons of pain. Mm -hmm. So I I give it a few more years before they're going to develop something. That'll because be everybody's easy, got right. the, there's too much of a market for it, and I think it'll be like a lunchtime. Like they're already starting to do something that like creates this really high frequency vibration that like breaks the ink up with vibrations, and then your skin like naturally just kind of pushes it out. Oh, I didn't so realize. I've seen, okay. yeah, I've heard that these things are coming out. So I am hopeful for the future. And I used to be like, oh, it'll be no big deal, but. That's one where just during this time in my life, I'm like, mm-hmm, I would rather not have that. So just like, don't do that, kids. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, and that kind of yeah. just leads me into my final question, which is just what advice would you give your younger self? If you could go back, Ooh. would you say don't get that tattoo? Oh, I mean, she probably need, she probably wouldn't listen to me at I'm, all. I was I just going like, to say, mine's like, like yeah, no, we're good. Like, Fuck you. I'm yep. getting it. Don't tell me what to do. You're so I stupid. I would tell her. Yeah, I would tell her to just believe in herself more. I would tell her to, that she's good. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. Do people cry when they do ask this question? Um, uh, I would just tell her that she is just perfect how she is. And she doesn't need to worry so much about what other people think about her. Oh, I love that. Just be her because that person is awesome. I love that. I do. I really do love that. That's perfect. I think we all should like remind ourselves and talk to our little person inside of our head, the younger version, because sometimes that's the person who comes out and who is like scared or reacts or, mm-hmm. or feels insecure. Not us now. Mm-hmm. We go, we'll, when we talk, we go, oh, well, I know now, I know I'm not like that, but we, we still, in that moment, the little girl comes out. So I, I would tell her, you are just perfect. Yep. I was going to say, I feel like oftentimes we, um, if we talk to our younger selves or if we talk to ourselves like we're speaking to a child, we're much kinder to ourselves. Absolutely. Much kinder. I talked to six-year-old me because she was very vulnerable. I'm always you like, have to. I'm like, don't do that. You know, like, but you're, you're great and I'm not going to mm-hmm. let you down. Just trust me. We'll be good. You know? Well, if, if any of your uh, uh, listeners uh, uh, tuning in feel like they have that same, um, feeling of like that little kid inside of them or that other person inside of them. I love working with clients on identifying those different states, those different people inside of us and talking to all of them and have really great, very effective science and and evidence-based treatments for how to really nurture those parts and and integrate them all into who you are today. Well, I love that. So how can they find you? Oh, wonderful question. Um, you can uh, look at all of my therapy stuff at uh, solutionsoc.com. That's solutions with an S and OC like Orange County. Um, and then uh, you can find me on Instagram at I'm Sarah Rice, uh, letter I, letter M. And then also Brain Candy Pod is our uh, uh handle on Instagram and the brain candy podcast.com is where you can find all fun brain candy stuff and uh, uh, check out those episodes on like, you know, wherever you get podcasts because you clearly listen to this one. So you know how to find them. Yeah. And, and you uh, guys are a really yeah. fun. Listen, you're smart women. You have interesting takes on things. It's like, it's exactly what it's called. It's, it's brain candy. It's like, you know, yeah. you might like, I love that Susie's like, I have giant fake knockers, but I'm smart. I'm like, that's perfect. So smart. Like, she is so She's wise mm-hmm. and also smart. Yep, yep. Well, I think you both are. And I definitely think that your chemistry and just the, what you bring to your listeners is great. And it's a reminder that, you know, there is no longer like this stereotypical mold that we have to fit into at all. And oh, you can be no. smart and sexy and funny and weird and, you know, just all of the above. There, it, like, yes. Or none of the above. Or right. What, or, I was or, just going to say, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you can. You you are perfect. Yep, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for taking the time. I can't believe how long we've talked. You were a wonderful guest. I'm sure everyone will be dying to ask you questions. And thank you for all of your insight. And um, hopefully we will connect again. Yes, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for sticking through all of my laughs and my tears. Oh, no, I loved it. All right, Sarah, have a great one. Bye. Bye.
Wasn't that fun? I feel like there was so many good takeaways from there that we can all apply to our everyday lives. And you definitely should follow Sarah on Instagram. It's I'm Sarah Rice. I'm also going to link it in the show notes. And check out the Brain or Brain Candy Podcast. That's at Brain Candy Podcast. That is the Instagram. But also, I will link the show in the notes for you as well. Um, I just love that she and Susie are just such smart women. But they're also funny and relatable, and it just goes to show that you don't have to just be one-dimensional. So I loved that, and I feel like those that, that advice that Sarah gave us absolutely applies to so many of the questions I get because I know that we're all kind of struggling, and we all give ourselves a hard time. And, you know, like COVID has absolutely been a really interesting time in our lives. Uh, So give yourself a little grace for sure. The pandemic's been hard. Um, And speaking of, speaking of the pandemic and um, just the way that the world has been going down, I actually got a question this week about something specific with the pandemic. And so I thought this was an interesting question for Christie's couch. So I am going to get into this one. And then, like I said, if you have a question, please DM um, on Instagram at Christie's couch and drop your drama so I can read it on the air. I would never reveal who you are and then give you all of my worldly advice. Okay. So let's get into this question. Um, it says, I have questions or I have a question for you regarding advice on a former friendship. So here's the story. So my dad got his first vaccine shot on Monday. He wasn't feeling too well afterwards and had a fever. We all assumed it was from the vaccine and none of us would get it. My dad ended up going to urgent care on Saturday morning because he was concerned, but no one knew he was getting a COVID test. I had plans with a friend that afternoon and I asked my parents if I should cancel. And they both said that I'll be fine. So when my friend came over and we hung out for 45 minutes socially distant outside, then my mom comes outside and tells the news that my dad has COVID. My former friend has now blocked me on everything because of something I can't control. I feel horrible. What do I do? You know, usually when I read these questions, I'm like, oh, this is the obvious answer. I mean, I feel like this one is a little bit more um, difficult to answer because it clearly speaks to um, like the fear and just the anxiety that COVID brings up in everyone. Um, The fact that you were outside, you didn't know you were socially distant. I would maybe attempt to reach out to that friend and just say like, listen, I am so sorry. I would never, ever put you in harm's way. I wasn't aware of it. You know, please understand and just kind of like appeal to that logical side and try to explain things. But if that person's blocked you on everything, that seems a little extreme. You know, like I can see like being upset or angry and not speaking to you. And I just want to say that this person had mentioned earlier in the email that they're in their 20s. So this is not like, you know, a junior high person being upset. This is an adult. And so I would just kind of reach out, try to explain the situation, apologize. Who's going to put their friend in harm's way? No one. And then if they know you and they are friends with you, they understand that you're not that type of person, but maybe they were just panicking and that was like their knee-jerk reaction. So I would attempt to maybe clear the air. And if that person is still having like super big issues with it, then you know, maybe give them space and let them kind of come to terms with everything. And if they test negative, you know, like you didn't do anything wrong. I don't feel like, I mean, especially you didn't know you were socially distant, you know, you, you took all the precautions. Like there are people in the world who have COVID that we're exposed to. Like that is the reality of today. So it feels to me like this person just had like a terrified reaction. And maybe once they calm down, you'll be able to kind of appeal to their logic, so to speak, if that makes sense. 
Okay. Well, I hope that helps. Um, but anyway, so yes, please write in with your Christie's Couch questions because that is my favorite part of the show. And it's been a little bleak, you guys. I haven't had a lot of questions. And so I've been kind of skipping that, but I really want to get back to it because that's where I feel like I do my best work. All right. So that is about it. I'm going to wrap it up because I know this episode has been super long and I appreciate you giving me like space in your brain or your ears for so long. So I will absolutely talk to you next week and don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Bye. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on on your podcast app.